biogas generator, guys. So this 55 gallon barrel was salvaged. My neighbor was throwing it out, so I grabbed it. And I had to go buy a three inch hole saw because I didn't have one. And I had to go buy these, I don't know what you call them, grommets or uniseals, I think is what they call them. It's two inch uniseal. And I had to get the two inch pipe. So three inch hole, two inch uniseal. It's supposed to slide right in there nice. I'll have to do that off camera because I don't have enough free hands to do it on camera. I'm gonna pop those in. I already cut all of the PVC pipe to length. I cut the holes where they're supposed to be according to the video that I've watched. And I'll link to that video in this description. But as long as you have the tools, this seems to be like a pretty easy deal. But I'll report back to you here on how we got it coming along as we go along. Okay, so I got these pipes in and man, it was way harder than they showed it in the video. So let me tell you a couple of things that I did that you may not want to do and maybe something that I did that you want to try. First off, these holes, I used a three inch hole, hole saw and what I did was I cut out the bungs, okay? Um, I wouldn't do that again if I had another chance to do this. I'd leave the bungs in, I'd tighten the caps up and I'd drill three separate holes. Now this one, you notice I don't have any um, silicone caulk around there and that's because it was a super good tight fit. On the ones that I drilled out the bung, these went in they were loose. And you can't have them loose, guys. The whole idea is that you're creating an airtight seal, watertight seal, so none of the gas that you're making escapes out those holes. You want it to escape out your tube, not the holes, not, not this gap that's in there. So I just filled it with some caulk, and I hope that that solves my problem. But if again, if I had to do it over again, i drill three separate holes. Um, as far as getting these pipes to go down into these uniseals, um, what I would suggest is you take a sander and you sand down around the edges, get the rough edges off, obviously. You don't want to scrape up your, your uniseal and create any cuts. But also try to taper it a little bit, if you can, on the side, so it kind of goes in at a tapered angle. And then you use good old-fashioned petroleum jelly. Ta-da! And I just ran a little bit of petroleum jelly around the inside of the uniseal, and then I coated the, um, the pipe a little bit when it went in. And what, it, literally guys, I struggled for 45 minutes before I used the petroleum jelly. And it just, no matter what I did, no matter how much force I put on there, it wouldn't go in. And when I used the petroleum jelly, it was still not a huge picnic, but it was way easier. And I got it, got them all in within a couple of minutes. So petroleum jelly worked. So one of the things that I had to figure out was the filter, or not the filter, the funnel. I had to figure out the funnel on the end of the input tube. The video that I watched for this, they used one of those, you know, I think it's a three or five gallon water jug. I don't know why that's having trouble focusing, but it is. I apologize. So a three or five gallon water jug. Now, I don't have one of those, but I did have one of these, a little coffee tin. And what I did was I used a three inch hole saw and I cut a hole in there, same as I did on the rest of these. And I had an extra uniseal over because it came in packages of two. So I had to buy four of them and I only needed three for this thing. Well, I used the fourth here. Just put it on there made it flush and level with the pipe that's that's coming up out of here. And so now I can dump stuff in there and I can use a stick and push it down in. And, you know, we'll use uh, our dog waste, you know, dog poo. Um, you can use pretty much anything you want in here, vegetation, uh, food scraps, meat, you know, meat scraps, which you wouldn't put in compost, uh, but you can put in this. Um, bacon grease, that sort of thing, C cooking oil. Anything you, you want to discard of, you can put in here, and the bacteria is going to break it down and turn it into methane, and the methane is going to be collected in a biogas bladder. Now, I don't know why the instructions told us to make this pipe so long. I might end up shortening that up quite a bit, but there's the outlet tube. I got a little ball valve on the end here. This is where I'm going to put some type of... Uh, uh, Tax or some type of clear tubing, and that's going to be connected to a bladder bag of some sort. And that's where we're going to, again, guys, with the focusing, I apologize. That's where we're going to go ahead and collect our methane gas. And then from there, I guess we're going to use it for our cooking stove because our cook stove is propane. And I know I'm going to have to change the orifices on that, but there's the 100 gallon tank out there for our cook stove. And again, there's a big experiment, and this is, you know, coming some way into more self-sufficiency. Propane's relatively cheap. It's relatively easy to get. 
Uh, this would be neat because, hey, it gives you something to do with the dog poo, right? Throw it in there and uh, let nature do its thing. But it, really, I just, I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of being able to create our own fuel that we can use to cook. Or I guess we can change up the generator and the generator can run off of this sort of thing. I mean, there's all sorts of things that we could end up doing, but this is a pretty cool concept. I thought we'd give it a try. So, so far, here's where we're at. And that's all I need to do is start feeding this thing. And our dogs have no shortage of fuel for it, if you know what I mean. And um, then we're going to start collecting biogas. I'm going to have to buy one of those bladder tanks. And it looks like a giant tarp that's kind of uh, um, sealed together in a big bag. And I don't know where to get them. I've been looking online. I know I can order them from China. It takes me a month to get them. But that's, that's okay. As long as this is sealed up and we're creating gas, that's great. So I will report back to you in future video clips and let you know how this thing is going. But this summer, I'm hoping to produce some of our own methane gas, store it, and be able to use it for cooking. Okay, my last clip here for now anyway on this biogas digester. Um, I'm not sure why the directions told me to have this half inch pipe as long as it is. I don't know that there's any real reason for the actual functioning of this, so I may end up taking that out and cutting it down low. But I got a tube connected to the plumbing and I got it going into a twin air mattress. Again, guys, I was gonna buy one of those, uh, I think it's an Inatex or Intex, or Puxin. Puxin is the name of the brand. I was gonna buy one of those and uh, that are specifically designed for this. But after talking to my buddy out there in Hawaii, he said the next thing he's gonna do is buy just a regular old air mattress. So that's what I did. I put the tubing right into the end of the air mattress. I set it to deflate so the valve was open. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct. I'm gonna just wait and see. So we don't have a whole lot of material in there. I did stuff it with some um, you know, garden scraps this morning. And we have some other things in there. I just ground it up into kind of a slurry, threw it in there, put enough water in there to where it's covering up the hole. And the hole is in, gosh, I'm trying to think of how we did this, gang. I got this cut at a 45, that's the inlet. I got this one with a hole, I think about a third of the way up. And I got this one with a hole all the way at the top. So the gas is going to rise, it's going to go into this hole, it's going to come up through, and the theory is down through the tube and filling up the container there, the, the air mattress. And then you know, I'll worry about the next step next. we got to figure out how we're going to pipe it into the stove or what we're going to do with it. But big experiment. This is just furthering the, um, the idea of self-sufficiency. Uh, yeah, it's cheap and relatively easy to buy propane right now and uh, but, but guys I, I don't know how long that's going to be the case maybe it's going to be the case forever maybe not i think this is a cool little experiment wasn't super expensive wasn't super time consuming uh the, the most time consuming part was trying to figure out the jigsaw puzzle and get all the right plumbing equipment and that took a little bit of time and ordering those uniseals and uh, you know having the right tools you know you need a three inch hole saw to cut out the two inch uniseal that pops right down in there, and we'll see how it works. We'll see if this is all going to be sealed up, if it's going to pump the gas like we're hoping. It might take days, weeks, months. I don't know. Um, I know it's going to be a large function. Is going to be how much material we put in there. I did put a little bit of yeast in there. I think I saw a couple of videos that suggested that to help start the process of uh, bacteria. I, again, I don't know how much of this is right. It's been... Uh, months since I really looked into this and it's just taken a while to get all the material and get it together but we got it I'll report back to you let you know how it works out maybe a big fail in the future uh, maybe a small fail and I just have to make some adjustments to make it right uh, maybe a big win I'll let you know okay gang we are looking at my worm composting bin at least part of it now I've shown you this in several other videos and I've shared with you my experience with trying to get the black gold out of there, the vermicompost. And it's been difficult, but I've read a lot of your comments and I've listened to a lot of what y'all said. So here's what I tried. I took a three gallon bucket. It was an old kitty litter bucket. And uh, I actually was using it for a chicken water at one point. So it already had uh, holes drilled in the bottom for the chicken nipples. And since I made that other chicken nipple water with a PVC pipe, I showed you that in a prior video. 
uh, I stopped using the bucket and the bucket now has holes in it. So it had limited uses for me at that point, but it worked perfect for this. What I did was I put the two gallon bucket right in there and I put some dirt in there and some leaves and I started putting the food in there and the worms found their way up through the holes into the bucket and um, I didn't get them all. There's plenty of worms left in there, gang. But at some point you got to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater and just say, hey, am I going to take hours and hours and hours trying to dig through every worm or am I going to try to uh, save the majority of them and, and use this other vermicompost? And I decided that I was going to pitch some of the worms that I have left in this bucket. But uh, I, I did this for probably a month and a half, two months, got the worms used to going up in there. And so I think I got the majority of them up in the bucket so I'll be able to keep them alive. And I'm going to empty this out. Um, I'm estimating it's about 35 or 40 pounds. And it's, I'd say semi-moist, but it's in great shape. And uh, dried out, it might be, you know, maybe half that weight. So let's say some, somewhere between 17 and a half and uh, 20 pounds, somewhere around there. So that, that's a good haul. I'm going to put it in my used doggy bag here, the dog food bag. And I'm going to use it for any plantings that I do. And that greenhouse, guys, I'm in love with it out there. Uh, but it's gotten to the point this past week where it's in the low 90s during the week and it's sunny and it gets, even when I open up all the, the air vents in the top and keep the doors wide open, it gets to 110 or thereabouts in there. So it's too hot for plants at that point. They all started to wilt. So I found myself every night putting them in, every, every morning taking out most of my plants. But it's great for seedlings. So I do plan on using that um, through the spring and fall months each year and maybe even part of the summer depending on what it is I'm growing but I really do want to make an operation where I'm growing in that uh, continuously or at least uh, semi-continuously throughout the majority of the year quick garden update guys hopefully you can see what's going on out there hey there's the white trash pool that's mostly level um, anyway we've been enjoying that that's been fun especially in this 90 plus degree weather uh, today it's a little cooler still humid as all get out and it's going to be about 80 degrees with uh, you know, dew points in the high 60s, so yikes. But the plants and the lawn, everything's going to get a break, and we got 10 days of rain scheduled, which is almost unheard of, but thunderstorms every single day, and the garden's going to love that. Now you see I got a couple of corn stalks there. We planted corn all up that row, and I also planted 10 seeds in the greenhouse, and only two came up in the greenhouse. That's all we have. But we have peas planted next to that. The pepper plant that I've showed you guys many times out there on the far corner, on the left corner there, uh, that is growing gangbusters again. That's the one that I overwintered, and we have flowers on it now. And I have three or four or five different kinds of tomatoes out there. Uh, I'm super excited about the deep, uh, the, the blue um, cherry tomatoes from Deep South Homestead. I got probably a half dozen of those plants out there. We got radishes, pumpkin, watermelon, spinach, kale, uh, and a bunch of different kinds of peppers that will eventually be in there. I only have bell peppers in there right now, but I have California wonders, Spanish peppers, jalapenos, and cayennes that will all go in there eventually. And the raised bed garden is looking pretty dang good as well, gang. I'll just show you that. Hey, there's the bio generator that I've been working on. Hello. I still have to, uh, I still have to get a bag for it. And after talking to my buddy, uh, gosh, I want to get his channel correct. I think it's DIY off grid uh, or modern DIY off grid. He's the guy out in Hawaii. He's building an off-grid place. He's got some cool stuff going on. And the biogas generator was one of the things that I saw on his channel. I said, you know what? I've seen these. I've been thinking about them. I'm going to give it a try. And I did. And uh, when I talked to him about the bag, I said, hey, I'm having a hard time finding those pucks and bags. He said, dude, if I had to do it all over again, I'd just use a regular air mattress, way cheaper and uh, just as effective. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I still haven't placed the order yet because it's only 23 bucks and to get free delivery... It's going to be $25 on Amazon, so um, I'm going to wait until I find something else that I need. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, cucumbers out in the other garden there as well as is, is in here. So we have cucumbers in here, tomatoes, a couple of watermelon that aren't really taken off just yet, especially that little guy right about there. He's not taken off real well yet. Um, but this is kind of the experiment. And, you know, the soil is horrible. I had to dig it up from where I did the pig wallow back in the pig uh, the pig yard back there and it's mostly clay but i've uh, since been amending the soil i've been using um, wood ash i got a lot of wood ash in there and of course leaves for mulch and that'll decay and break down into uh, um, organic matter that's going to 
obviously help the soil over time. But that's looking pretty good too, gang. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> 